we are glad to have you guys uh, join us for email marketing quick, quick start. We, we've been offering a number of different web webinars uh, Monday afternoons, and I would consider this kind of our encore series. Uh, this is our second time through some of these topics. And so we have the benefit of getting some input from uh, the first time around, but also we've got uh, the benefit of everyone submitting their questions ahead of time. So <clears throat> probably at about every 15 minutes or so, we will stop and make sure that we've answered some of your questions along the way. You have a button down at the bottom. It says Q&A. Uh, feel free to uh, submit any questions that you may be having as the webinar goes along and we will field those. I'll, I'll help manage those on behalf of uh, Sherry. And we will take as much time as we can to answer everybody's questions. So again, thank you for everybody joining up. Um, the last thing I will say is we are recording this and you will get a link to the recording uh, in the next day or so. And uh, if there's anything that you want to see over again, et cetera, uh, you'll have a chance to see that as well as um, <clears throat> if, you, if you want it closed captioned, whatever, uh, there is a dialogue box on the right hand side of these recordings so that you can follow along that way if you so choose. So uh, with that, I'll introduce our subject matter expert for today, uh, Cherry Bales. And uh, Sherry is uh, one of our star uh, experts uh, with SCORE, but she also runs her own uh, business, her own communications business. Uh, she'll tell you a little bit about her history and experience, but uh, probably one of the best individuals that I know uh, relating to knowledge of constant contact, social media, uh, marketing, and how to reach potential customers, current and potential customers, and do that effectively. So with that, I'll turn it over to Sherry. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, John. Can you hear me okay? I think everybody can. And you can see my screen, I'm assuming. I did want to call your attention to the top left corner here where it says try constant contact free. If you would like to play along today, you may go to this link, bit.ly slash Sherry Bales, and you can get a, well, I didn't mean to go backwards, and you can get a, uh, a free trial of Constant Contact. And I'm gonna show that link a little bit later. But real quickly about me, I've owned Hannah Gold Communications since 1991. I started with a, a small writing client um, and it's just grown and grown and grown. And throughout the years, I have worked with other businesses um, on a consultancy basis. I've been a W-2 employee. I've been a 1099 employee. So I've had a lot of, of different experiences, both with small business and nonprofit and also in the education field. And this is a picture of me fake rock climbing, wearing a Texas t-shirt in Arizona with a golfing hat. So I don't know... I guess that represents my personality pretty well. But you didn't come to hear me or see me. So let's talk about what today's agenda is going to cover. Well, one of the things that I like to start with is how to build an email list. Okay, before you even get to writing your email, you've got to have people to send it to. So we're going to talk about that today. Then, of course, we'll talk about how to write your email. What makes good content? What can we say? What can't we say? Uh, what words are trigger words and what is SEO and search terms and how can I use that in my email? Talk about that a little bit. Talking about how to design your call to action. Now, I am a big, big fan of the call to action and without it, you have no measurable marketing results. If you don't ask your customer to do something, whether it's to make a purchase, to make a donation, to click to visit your Facebook page. Um, that's a call to action, and I'll go into that deeper, but just, just keep that in the back of your mind. I'm gonna be nagging you about your calls to action. 
And then finally, I'll give you a demo, a live demo here on how to finalize and actually send an email campaign. I'll do that in the second half of this presentation. But first, let me ask you a question. I know you can't answer, but what is the number one app on your smartphone? Especially right now, what's the number one app most of us are using every day? Did anyone say email? So I don't know about you, but first thing in the morning, roll over, grab the phone, check the email, then check the other email, then check the Facebook, then check the Instagram. We're really mobile driven and especially so right now. So more people, I love this from Litmus, more people own a cell phone than own a toothbrush. Well, I'm here to tell you you need both. Okay, so the reason email marketing works so well is that people read it. So 91% of people are checking their email daily. I would, I would venture a guess that that's probably somewhat higher right now. And 88% of those people are checking it on their smartphones. Again, I would again raise that 88 up right now because so many of us are working in mobile environments and we're finding it really important to have that. We're doing banking, we're getting emails from our tire store letting us know what their COVID updates are. Whatever it is that we're getting in our emails, um, we're, we're getting them, they're being delivered. So email's really reliable. The research says, again, Litmus Direct Marketing Association and Pew Research Center say that the email that you send is likely to be delivered 90 plus percent of the time. Now, obviously this depends on the email list that you put into this, uh, the people that you're sending to, if, if they don't know you or they're not valid email addresses, then that number is not going to be as, as uh, achievable. Compare that to a Facebook post, which will reach just roughly 2% of your fans. So is it better to speak directly to them or is it better to shotgun approach and throw it up on Facebook? Why email? Because email works. It has been estimated that email marketing has three times the conversion rate as social media. Now let me explain to you what I mean in these terms by conversion rate. So when someone answers your call to action, and let's say that you have an email marketing message that says, click here to go to our website. Okay, a marketer would consider that a conversion. A conversion is also called a sale. Now let's say that we took that a step further and our website led someone to our sale page and they clicked on our sale page and made a purchase, okay? Conversion is saying here, the, the statistic is saying that three times the number of people who answer that call to action on social media will answer it in an email because it's right there in front of them. So conversion is that call to action, what do I want people to do? And according to, again, these sources at the bottom, very, very good sources, email gets more results. There's actually an even larger number that I have read from SCORE in that email can provide a 4,000% return on investment. I will say that again, a 4,000% return on investment because it's inexpensive, because a lot of the content is free, because you don't have to pay to mail it, and because the tools like Constant Contact that we'll be talking about today are relatively accessible and relatively inexpensive. But in the email world, for every $1 you spend on an email marketing campaign, so your ad spend, there's a $44.25 return on investment. So every dollar you spend sending emails results in an, a return on your investment. So when you're sending out an email to people, and, and I don't even want to see the look on your face when I ask you to remember what was the worst email message you've received lately, whether it didn't load right, whether it had clunky video, whether there were misspellings, whether it was off brand, whatever it is, the first impression when I open that email from you really, really matters. And so Constant Contact has put together some tips and really based on science. I say tips, marketing is more based on science now than just instinct. They put together some guidelines, there we go, that will help you to be the most effective. 
Let's take a quick look. If you've received an email lately from a company or an organization, if you're a nonprofit, it might look a little bit like this. So you've got a header up here that says who it's from, who to reply to, what the subject of the email is, and what the pre-header or the description of the subject. Talk about that in just a moment. You've got logos and colors. This is the brand. This is their color of red. This is their logo. Here are their, their statistics and their hours and their phone number and their contact information. Next is an image. An image speaks millions, I don't even think it's thousands anymore, it speaks millions of volumes louder than pretty much anything I ever type. So when I'm posting on social media or I'm sending out clickable emails, pictures get attention more than text. I think we're just becoming slow at, at reading and we want to grasp the concept or the context from the image. You also need to include one, two, three, four, five, number five, the message body. So what is this email about? What do you want me to do after I read this email? Do you want me to feel warm and fuzzy? Do you want me to order some barbecue sauce from your website? Uh, do you want me to buy a bike? Do you want me to read your blog? We're telling people what's here and then we're going to ask them to actually do it through the call to action. So if you say, read my blog, this button would take people to your blog. And I'll show you how to make a little button. And then the footer. You must, because of um, the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, you must include your name and address in the footer of your email when sending it out to avoid being considered a spammer. Now, if you're a small business owner like me and you operate out of your home office, that can be a little disconcerting. I have found that you can, you can kind of talk to Constant Contact and maybe get them to eliminate your street address for there. But for most of you, you want that information there. You want as much information in there as you can get. And if you have social links, there's a way to actually link out to those. So those are the seven elements of email design. We have the header, the pre-header, which tells people what the email is about, logo and colors, which addresses your brand, image, which is what you're promoting or what your, what your message is about, the body, which tells people why they should care, the call to action that tells them what they should do, and the footer that lets them know how they can get a hold of you. Here's what you need to change. So you're going to open one of these. I'm going to show you this in a little bit. You're going, to open, you're going to open a new email template, and it's going to allow you to change several of these elements. Not required for all, all of them, but for several of them. So first up here is the header and the subject, okay? When you get an email from someone, someone that says, don't miss out, last days to save, do you open it right away? Um, sometimes I do if it's from someone I like. So the pre-header then can give your audience, give your recipient a little bit more information. So instead of last day to save, buy now, the pre-header then under the subject might say bikes on sale through May 2nd, May 31st, May 32nd. Um, but the pre-header gives your audience just a little bit more of a peek about what's inside that newsletter, and you want that pre-header to be as relevant as it can be to your audience. Logos and colors are part of the build site, so we can do that when we get there. You definitely want an image of some sort, you definitely want a message, and you definitely want to change or add a link. So if this is the template that we're working from. It's going to say things like a direct and compelling headline. Don't leave that there. And I have received emails with, with things like the copy, your copy should address three questions. This is for you to change. You must make changes to these things before you send out your email. So how to grow your email list. John, do you have questions on this? I think I, think I had taken a couple from before. Um, let's go through this and then this is a big area. So let's take a pause right after this section. So we're going to talk about how to grow your email list. Getting permission is important. All right. If you send an email to people who don't know you or who don't recognize your company name or your info at company name, 
you're likely to be marked as spam. The more your emails are marked as spam, the less likely they are to get delivered to people who legitimately want to receive them. So you wanna be very, very careful when you sign people up. I have had folks tell me, well, I go to networking events and I put out a fishbowl so I can get business cards. And then I add them to my mailing list. Well, I checked and that's really not quite the way it should be done. So if you want to collect those business cards, yes, absolutely collect them. But at the same time, make sure that the people are aware that by giving you a business card, they are opting in to receive your newsletter if you intend to add them to your email database. Not saying it's a bad thing to collect them, I'm just saying make sure that they're aware of you're going to send them a promotional email. And then they're also obviously able to unsubscribe with one click. So when did you last sign up for an email? I know my own personal experience is usually when I'm at the checkout on a, an online order and they offer me 10% off to subscribe to their email. Now I'm really good at unsubscribing from bothersome emails, but not a lot of people take the time to do that. So I signed up because someone asked me to sign up. There's a couple different ways you can go about this. In person, as you're making a sale, it might be a little bit tougher now, but perhaps some branding on your bag or something you know, that says, join our list, go here, and you can give them a link that they can follow. You can do it in your print materials, again, with a link that they can type in to join your distribution list or join our newsletter or hear from us regularly or get our cool messages, whatever you wanna call it. And then there's the online, which you can put a, a little widget, a little, uh, I don't know what they're called, widget on your website to allow people to join your newsletter as well, your constant contact newsletter. Now, let me tell you an example of when this worked really well for a small company. That Texas t-shirt that I was wearing, I got that in a little store, a little boutique store, and there was a sign sitting by the register that said, ask me how to get a free gift. And I, of course, said, how do I get a free gift? And she says, well, you need to sign up for our mailing list. And I said, well, okay. So I signed up for the mailing list. She handed me my little, my little package and they were all cute little wrap packages. And then there was a bigger package that said, ask me how to get a free gift. And I said, well, how do I get that free gift? Um, it turns out she had quite a racket going because if you kept upgrading, by the time you got to post a Yelp review with at least 30 words and an image, I came home with the matching necklace and earrings. I thought it was a great promotion, but it, she got me to sign up for her newsletter list. And I fully intended and expected that I would get something from her in, in form of a promotional email or a newsletter email. And I did, and eventually I just unsubscribed. Print's a little more challenging. Online, you have all kinds of ways and tools that you can send people to that site. So you can ask when making a purchase. We don't shake hands right now. Um, when you're helping someone, if you're in retail, you've got curbside, if you have carry out, even on your, on your website, and you can ask in every email that you send out because it might be that they shared it with someone. At any events, you can also get apps that will insert and will work in contact with your website and Constant Contact. You can put signs, you know, throw some banners up right now. Marcus Lemonis is one of my favorite business kind of investors from the profit. And right now he is so big on signage and, and signage is so important. I went to pick up a drive-through um, restaurant that, that wasn't really a drive-through ever. And they said, yeah, come to our drive-up window. And I was like, I, I don't know where that is. And when I got to the restaurant, there was no clear signage directing me to the drive up window. I've been to the restaurant many, many times, but you know, why not? Hey, join our, or get email from us, get notification of specials, find out when our annual sale is going to start. And again, other tools you can use texting. On your website is probably one of the easiest ways because people actually have to make the conscious decision to go in and enter their information but I know that you can also insert your sign up now button on Facebook from Constant Contact, which can add people to your list. You can put that in your email signature from any regular business emails that go in and out. 
You can do it with an opt-in on your point of sale system. There are a lot of ways that you can get these, but the most important thing that I cannot emphasize enough is do not just harvest a list of emails off of LinkedIn or Facebook or anywhere else, throw them into an email campaign and send out 500, maybe 400. 400 probably wouldn't get you flagged. 300 would be better. I'd start with 10. No, <laughs> start with maybe 100. But you know, really don't make it a habit of sending emails to just people you don't even know. Okay, so that's my, that's my speech on how to grow your list. Any questions from our group about that, John, that I could look at right now? Yeah, Sherry, um, there were a couple questions submitted ahead of time. One was on techniques to build your list, and I think you've covered that. Okay. Um, and one thing that kind of uh, in, a, in addition to that, what about building your list and tapping into individuals that have, let's say, old cell phones and maybe they don't have uh, a computer account? Um, I would think that some of the things uh, that you talked about with in-person and printing allow you to maybe customize that, but do you want to spend like a minute or two on that? Ask the question again. So a lot of this assumes that people have really good uh, computer access right. and, Connectivity. and um, smartphones, but mm -hmm. maybe they've got old flip phones with just text messaging. Right. And so I'm wondering uh, if there's any adaptation that that can happen for this? I know that the emails are mobile friendly. Once you type and, and design an email and send it, that it can be viewed on a mobile phone. But someone who's still texting probably is not going to be a really high priority client for email marketing. Now, that's not to say they shouldn't because everyone who has any kind of an online account has an email address whether they're checking it or not remains to be seen. So that's a tougher market to get to. And, and we're actually going flying by email marketing and we're on text marketing now. So you'll get little pop-ups from your favorite store when you go across their geofencing barrier outside the store. <clears throat> yeah, and, and then um, another one related to this is obviously you can generate a lot of contacts but you may get a lot of bounce backs. You may get a lot of uh, indifferent responses. You know, uh, it can get overwhelming. Do you have any ideas or tips on how to be a little more realistic about that? A, only send to people you know. B, send in smaller batches. If you have a thousand people, send them out in smaller batches. Um, C, make sure that you have your unsubscribe turned on because that's a requirement and that your footer information is contained. And D, or four, I forgot what I was counting in, um, would be to segment your lists. So I have a home health care agency, for example, whose constant contact account contains active clients and caregivers or their own, you know, their own adult caregivers or relatives, con point of contact. They have a list for referral sources, so hospitals, nursing homes, long-term care facilities. They have a list for community partners, and that includes things like their vendors, the local chambers of commerce, the local media. And then they have a platform, a, a list that's more internal, that's just to staff and constituents. And so by segmenting those into separate lists, you're only sending the news that that audience wants to hear. So their patients don't want to hear happy birthday, Megan. <laughs> so, right. And then vice versa. Oh, that's, okay, good. that's really good advice. Now, one more, one more thing, and whether, I, I can't remember if you're going to talk about this in a little bit, but the nuisance factor of emails uh, there was a question submitted ahead of time about the frequency. Yes. And what's a best practice of how many times, how frequently do you send out uh, these kind of emails? 
truly depends on your niche. It depends on what kind of product or service you have. If I'm a restaurant, I'm going to send out an email every single day with my takeout menu for the evening or my event. We had a drive-in date night at a local restaurant here. I'm going to be sending that out fairly regularly. If it's an event like this one, you're going to see that email in your inbox. And this is a really short term. These are quick off the cuff events. So we don't have a lot of lead time, but you're going to see that email to register for that event on a typical uh, at least three to four week lead time. You're going to see it eight times. So multiple emails a day, not excited about those. I have some high pressure marketers and SEO people that want to send me tips and, and, and they're tips. Yes, they're tips, but they're also thinly disguised sales pitches. So just be honest, don't overpopulate your audience. And if, if the message that you have is critical and needs to go out every day, like a deadline, a registration, or an ad for new product or a limited offer, then more frequently. But I try to get clients on board with once a month. Right now, it's much more critical because email is how we're communicating with our customers. And we need to be up to speed. So, you know, anywhere from once a day to once a week, as often as people don't start unsubscribing, I guess, when they start unsubscribing, you'll notice that it's, it's gone too far. Okay, let's Excellent. move on to yep. writing, which is always, we didn't, we didn't start small businesses to be marketers. I totally get this. And a lot of people hate writing and, and they don't feel like they're good at it. And you know, my only advice here is to work with a professional. But if that's not available, let's just talk about some of the types of emails that you're going to send and what the content might look like. Now remember, we're still gonna follow this format of logo, image, headline, body text, call to action, and button. And they get two buttons here because this is a donate. This must be a nonprofit. So like I just pointed out, this is a time-based email. This is volunteers by March 15th at 9 a.m. So I'm gonna be sending that March 14th, March 13th, March 12th, March 10th, March 8th. I'm gonna be sending that out multiple times. And don't forget then you've got, like I said, the call to action here is can you help? Can you help? That's not like buy now, it, it, it's much more subtle. So we want to think creatively when we use our calls to action. Or flip sides, is your email strictly informational? And again, this is a nonprofit logo, image, headline, text, and, and people love bulleted lists of things. So now this one says, check out our website to see all the ways we're preparing for this year. That's the call to action. That's what they want you to do as a result of receiving this email. Unless you want to send out an informational email that's just talk, 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 with no questions, no asks, you're going to want to use that call to action. I just can't, I can't repeat that over and over and over enough. So it doesn't always have to be a sale. So you're not always hard selling a product, can you help? And you're not always hard selling anything because you're just maybe saying, check out our website, which is a, it used to be called that a soft sell. Okay, down those seven things you gotta look at on the five you gotta change. Here's your subject line. This is what will get people to read or not read your email. And one thing I have discovered is that questions have a better open rate than statements. And we, you, we've noticed that I, I've kind of used that with score newsletters over the, over the couple of years just to test them to see which got better open rates. And by open rates, I mean someone who actually clicked open my email to see it. Um, and it's questions that, that really work. But the subject in the pre-header is what your recipient will see before they see anything else from you. So your subject line, you want to be personable and you want to be friendly. So you can use you or your. John, schedule your consultation today. Or you can create a sense of urgency. Sorry, I went too fast. Last chance register by Friday. Some of you guys registered for this about 
I don't know, how far are we into three o'clock? 25 minutes ago? Because my email went out this morning and it said last chance to register. And then the one you all got an hour before said only an hour left before the, the webinar starts. So that urgency is put into my email headlines and subheads on purpose. Make them laugh. Read between, be, I can't even say it, let alone laugh at it. Read between the wines. That's an invitation to open that up and go, what are you talking about? Did you make a mistake here? And you open it and you see that it's from a home wine sale party company or something. And, and then it makes sense. But you want them to be so, so, not confused, so intrigued by your headline, your subject line, that they'll actually open it. You know, here's an emotional appeal, take five minutes. These are also calls to action, I might add. Just if you're thinking, if you're thinking broadly, pique their interest. This one is so overused though. Whenever I get an email that says you don't want to miss this, I usually just don't care. I just ignore it. But that's not to say it wouldn't work in your industry. And then, like I said, ask a question. Are your investments working for your business? Are you satisfied with the menu you have for the week? Um, I don't know. I can't think of these <laughs> on the fly. We'll use things like, does your small business need marketing advice? So those are the kinds of subject lines asking a question that can get people to say yes. And we want to get them to yes. So with your subject line, oh, sorry, with the button the wrong way. Creative. This is uh, five tips. Oh, bulleted lists and, and numbered lists work really, really well. Now, if you're going to put like the top 27 reasons to buy Joe's barbecue sauce, that's probably not going to be as popular. It's going to give you a lot of places to, to put in keywords, but you want to keep it short. Five tips, 10 tips, but those are really popular. Those are really popular posts. To avoid being Spam marked, do not type in all caps, do not use multiple exclamation points. There's only ever one exclamation point. It's kind of self-fulfilling. Um, you know, and don't use things that sound like a, a, a gosh, I'm going to offend someone. I was going to say multi-level marketer, used car salesman, home sales, cutco. Just don't, don't use phrases that could get you flagged that look like it's too good to be true because that's one of the biggest indicators with spam is when something's too good to be true it has parentheses or it has so many exclamation points in it so keep those out of your subject line okay the next is the pre-header text and that's where you're going to tell them what's what it's about so they see this in their email depending on what view they have and they can see look what just arrived New season, new bike, get out and ride. They can see that it's from bikes at Southside Cycling. And if they have any interest at all in getting out and biking, they're going to open that email. So this pre-header, remember this is different. This is the pre-header, not the subject. And you want these two to work together. So what they suggest here with you or your pre-header, personalized tips to lead a happy life. John, we can talk after the workshop. And then with the create a sense of urgency, here's the call. Reserve your spot today. Classes fill quickly. Remember, this will be available as a recording if I go too quickly for you. Read between the lines. Oh, enter your photo for a chance to win big. Now that makes sense. And it's a call to action. Five minutes and then tell them what, what's it for. $10 can provide a child with school supplies. Finally, get our three secrets, and then we like the questions. So are your investments working? Question, question, one question. Three questions to ask to maximize your results. And then your email actually gives them those three questions and answers. And then the numbers, ribs that will knock your socks off. Five tips for perfectly grilled ribs. Don't forget we've got to add an image then, something that is either what the product is, what we're selling, what we're hoping to attract attention to. And a lot of times I will actually create my whole little newsletter in a JPEG image and then upload that so that I don't have to work around text wrapping and font changes and such. So you can do that. And don't forget that you can include video and GIFs in your emails as well. Constant Contact gives you the ability to use videos or GIF files. 
within your emails. So what do we say and how do we say it? So this, this slide is just for the for-profit folks. We're assuming that Giraldi Consulting is making a profit. So the first thing you wanna say in your email is what do you have? What are you offering? What are you emailing me for? I wanna see that front and center. I don't wanna to have to dig around and find the headline. Why did you send me this? Okay, right here, it says how to streamline your website. Okay, if I need a website or I'm interested in, in my website's performance, that's got my attention. The next thing he does or she does here is how does it help me? So hello, Nicole, here's how I'll help you. I can streamline your website. It helps with the process payments and it helps you to access visitor data. Always get to the how and the, or the why and the benefit. So why do I need this? Because it will help you move faster. You can process payments faster and it provides all your details. Finally is the button. And this should be a clickable button and it sounds intimidating, but I'm going to show you exactly how to make one that when someone clicks on it will go to your event, your Facebook page, your website, your contact us form, wherever they would want to go. Okay, so same scenario only for nonprofits. What are you trying to accomplish? This is a campaign to get folks to share their pictures from a recent river cleanup day. So right away, share your photos and videos from river cleanup day. Why do we care? Looks like I was there. All right, if they're sending me, Nicole, a letter, an email that thank you for attending, then they know I was there. So now they just want me to share my photos and videos. And of course, at the bottom, because we are a nonprofit, is a little donate now button, donate today. Whatever you do, just keep it simple. The days of 14 page scrolling emails are gone. If you have long content, you should house that on your website. You should not try to put a 300 word blog story in an email. It's short, it's sweet, and right now it's focused on helping us put our products and services in front of as many customers as we can. They don't have time to read a long drawn out email. So get to the point use a picture, tell them why they should do this, and then tell them how to get to you. So let's talk a little bit more about calls to action. So what is a call to action? A call to action is you asking your customers to do something. So a call to action is you sending out a call, asking your customers to do something, to complete some step to click some button, to make a donation, to buy my product. So there's some ways that you can look at making those calls to action a little less boring, like buy now, okay? You can think outside the box. So I, I like to download social media guides from different sources around, but one day I came across one that said, get free candy. And I thought, well, okay, so I clicked on it. Well, it was another download, but at the bottom of it, I think you got like a coupon for a free candy bar or something. So the get more candy got my, or get free candy got my attention, got me to click there on that call to action. Typically order yours today, order now, going fast, join us, schedule a consultation. I think I used register for the webinar. Those are all, making a, not necessarily a, a monetary purchase but making a, a purchase commitment just like with donating isn't necessarily purchasing but it's making a commitment another tactic you can use is to give them a deal when someone says save now or buy now and get 10 percent off i'm probably going to use this 10 percent coupon if i have any interest at all in getting out and planting a bunch of pastas which i have thousands of right now but that buy now and get 10 percent off I, you know it got me at the local ace hardware i was doing a curbside and uh, i went to their main website and it said you know get 10 percent off your next order and then it turned out that i could call the store and get better quicker delivery of my stuff and i said well do i still get 10 percent off and they said absolutely so you know it's nice that they were a little flexible claim your coupon unwrap your surprise deal cole's uh, department store does a really great 
unwrap your surprise deal campaign. You know, and your call to action doesn't have to be about selling something. It could be about getting to know people or them getting to know you. So if you have a new Facebook page or, you know, let's say that your Facebook page is your business portal right now, as it is for some folks. So I live in Schoolcraft, Michigan, which is just south of Kalamazoo. And we have a small um, independent wholesaler down here called B&G Discount. And I'll give him a plug. I, I, I like the guy. He's been around for a long time. But it's basically just a, a warehouse full of clearance tchotchkes and, and tarps and gloves. They specialize in tarps and gloves. They don't have enough, enough bandwidth to put all their products on their website and sell them. But because they sold masks and gloves and bandanas and things, they were deemed an essential business. So they immediately went to their Facebook page. They sent one of their folks around the store with a, a whiteboard marker and a, a whiteboard. And that person would set up the whiteboard, write the price on it in front of a particular product and take a picture. And they would post 50 to 60 pictures to their Facebook page every single day. They have that much product. So when it came time for me to make Easter baskets and an Easter scavenger hunt for my adult children who are now living here, I called over there. I got on the Facebook page. I made a list. I called over there and they said, we'll have it ready for you in an hour. But I went to their Facebook page because I was already familiar with it. Maybe people don't know your Facebook page there or your, your Instagram or your Twitter feed is there. So you can ask people. You can ask them to do lots of things. And don't forget to ask for reviews, okay? If you don't ask, you can't get. And the research that I've been reading recently shows that getting a review by putting a link out to a review to your Google review site or your Facebook review site has a much better chance of being accomplished if it's in the email. Um, one thing I wanna add there is when people wanna leave you a review, somewhere in there, ask them to write words because when you leave a five-star review, Google says, oh, that's lovely, get to the end of the line. If you leave a five-star review in 20 words, Google goes, oh, that's better, come on, we'll, you know, we'll bring it. If you get a Google review with five stars and 60 words, these aren't, scientific numbers uh, but they tend to they tend to pull those words and phrases so when someone's searching for your product and they type widget reviews your product may come to the top because of that so make sure you tell them to leave some words as well event registrations i have met in the last months two months two and a half months so many creative entrepreneurs who had brick and mortar, brick and mortar event setups. So there is a biodegradable alternative to plastics products. There's a paint and sip. There's a custom perfumery. There's a florist. There's a yoga store. There's a coffee shop. These guys have all switched up to online events. And let me tell you, it sounds like, gosh, I, I, how do you paint online? Let's take Lauren from Colors and Cocktails. I don't know, she might've signed up today. Um, she's one of our favorites. And what she did was within days of, of the governor's order for Michigan to stay at home, she had developed a boxed kit that allowed you to pick up a box, go home, take all these things out of the box, whether it was a vase or a glass, you had all the little paint samples, you had the instructions, and then she would invite you to a Facebook Live event at five o'clock for an hour and give you the instructions on how to paint your thing. So if that wasn't cool enough, for Mother's Day, she partnered with a florist who they took pre-orders pre on Facebook, they sold them through Facebook and, and uh, Constant Contact, took the pre-orders, put a box together with a vase that you painted and a bouquet of flowers and a Mother's Day card. And there might have even been, um, there. they also partner with a perfumery called Aroma Lab, so there could have been a, a little perfumer thing there. So they're switching over to these online and they're charging for these. You buy the box, you, you pay the $45, you go and there's curbside pickup and you take your box with your flowers and your wine and your glasses home and and then you play along on Facebook. So there, that's a whole different webinar, but there are ways to do that. 
Whatever you do, direct them to where to take action. So if you want them to go to Facebook, send them to Facebook. If you want them to go to your website, send them to your website. All right, we're toward the end now. So let me hop out and give you my demo. Don't like log me out. All right, this is the constant contact interface. This is where all emails are created. Also events, depending on what level of, uh, of the software that you have. The free trial will give you everything that I'm going to show you today. And I'm just gonna build an email basically here in the last 15 minutes. I know it's gonna go fast, but again, you can record it. So we're gonna click on create and you may have your create button may look like that. It may look like this. Either way, it's gonna take you to the same thing. So we're gonna create an email. And we're gonna call this Sherry's Practice Email. Now down here, it's gonna ask, when do you wanna send it? That makes me panic, but don't worry. It doesn't actually schedule it. I still put it out a couple days though. It will not schedule and send your email until you approve it. So now we get to open in the editor and the editor says, what template would you like to use? So if we were to choose from all of these templates, I don't think I want to use the graduation one. Let's use the cupcake one. We've got the logo, the header, the copy, the image, the call to action. So how hard can it be, right? So let's pick, I want to pick one that we can change, that we can edit. Let's use this one. And this one says nonprofit, but that's just because that's what it says. So you have in this interface, several tools right up here that will build your email. This is a text block. This is a button. This is an image and this is an image. So we're going to take this newsletter and we're going to redesign it. When you click on a block, you must drag it over to the newsletter and wherever the pink box shows up is where it will land. If it shows a full line, it will go all the way across the page like this image right here. If it shows a little to the right, that's where it will go. If it shows to the left, that's where it will go. We're going to replace this nonprofit one. So I just basically clicked right on it. Then to get these tools to pop up anywhere in Constant Contact, you really have to click on something and that can be a little disconcerting. Hovering doesn't really show you anything and it should, but it doesn't. So you'll see a set of tools in here and remember these are based on an image that we inserted from here. I need to replace this image. So remember I said I was going to rebrand this with some different things. If I click on replace, I can go to my library, which is where I have lots of images stored, or I can upload a new image. And I think I have a folder out here on the desktop that I wanted to use. And we can have Jack's barbecue. So I'm gonna do that again, because John says I go too fast. It's all right, I'm trying to get everything in. We've inserted the image that we want and we can put it anywhere we like, but we have to click on it to do anything. We need to replace this image. The image URL would be if you were linking it out to an online image. Otherwise you would upload a JPEG or a PNG image here by clicking on upload file, going out to your computer. This works pretty much like any other upload. And they've given you some other things here. You can upload from your phone. You can get stock images. You can pull off your Facebook. But most of the time, I just bring in a brand new clean one. So I click on Jack's logo. And on a Mac, you can double click. But otherwise, you'll want to go down here and click open. Now, it's open, meaning it's in your library, but it has not been uploaded yet. So you have to click upload and then Jack's Backyard Barbecue will be in your library. And you can click done. 
So remember what we were doing. We were changing out this logo by replace, go to library, and we're going to hover over Jax and see how it says insert and customize. We're going to insert that picture. Now that's pretty small. I'm sure you can't even see it. So there's a tool, see this draw out tool, that allows you to really mess with the size of that. And since this is really our goal here is to see, you know, to be able to see our logo, I'm gonna do that. Let me zoom back in. And then to get anything completed, you must click done. So you don't have a lot of choices here. You can edit for left, right, or center alignment. You could trash it or you can add a link to a web page email document more about that later so we're going to say we're done there all right and the month and year if this were a new promotion but we're going to say this is jack's best rib recipes oh i would choose a word i could never spell right and we'll say cooking with jack and every time we are clicking within this text we have all these tools and abilities up here. We can select different typefaces. These are very, very similar to the Microsoft interface. 14 is a decent size for a newsletter. You can change the color of the text. You can change the color of the background of the text. I'll show you what that looks like. So I could make this box. Oh, yellow is not a very good choice, obviously. Um, can make the words yellow, which you never want to do. And then I'm clicking the done. So bold, italic, underline, left align, bulleted, or uh, space in between, single space, double space, left align, link. I'll show you insert in a second. I'm gonna click done. Now I need a new picture because this one doesn't work with cooking with Jack. So remember what we had to do. There's all these controls, but what we've got to do is click on the image then we can say replace, then we can say upload, then we can browse the computer, and I think we'll put in this little GIF image right here. We'll make everyone hungry. Uploading, and then forget that's not the last step. Once it's uploaded, it's not in your newsletter still or in your email yet. You've got to click that done, and then you've got to insert it. All right. So now, what do we have here? This month's Cooking with Jack talks about blah. You can get your own Jack's ribs by clicking our online ordering form below. Now, I also might just put in some prices here for people for my actual menu items. So I would flesh those out and make those into my own menu items just so people could see in advance. Again, same controls, but this is just text and click done. And I told you I would tell you about a button and then I'm going to have to like really zoom through the last two minutes, but I will keep going as long as you can stay on, I can stay on. So this is our button. And see, so you get the same text editing box as everything else. And this is where you can send people to your website. So if you want them to email your business to order, you can do that, but quite a few people will send them to the web page. And this is, again, very similar to what you would do in Microsoft. You would enter your website here. We're gonna use score. And we don't need to worry about this just yet. And I'm going to insert that and say done. Now I'm going to go down here. Obviously, we're going to want to insert all of our own details here because you can't get by without it. And then if you have social links, if you click on them and then click edit, you can choose which ones you want. You can delete the ones you don't want, and you can personalize those. But let's look at one of probably one of the most important buttons, which is check and preview. There's two things under here that you really want to do. One is preview. And that allows you to actually look at what your email would look like 
on desktop and on mobile. And I just really like looking at that. So nothing real functional there. You can just close out of that. The second one is check for errors. Okay, see, I have not actually put in any links in all these places right here, email, website. So it's telling me, hey, dum dum, you left the text out. So I'm going to go and I'm going to find that Pinterest link and I'm going to replace some of the stuff that they gave me in the template. So again, this is check for errors. This is relatively new and I like this. And then finally, send yourself a test. Don't send it out until you've sent it to yourself. So this allows you to send an email and a comment to anyone that you would like to see your email. And now let me show you where, when you're in preview, this is the only place your links will show up as working. So in order to check this button, which I directed to Southwest Michigan score, ding, 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 ding. I have to see it in preview mode. I have to see it in preview mode. All right, so that gets you into this. What do I have to do here? I have to change this. What's new? I don't know what's new with you. And questions, again, tend to get more response, more open. You can even personalize, and that's why you get emails from us that say, dear score, dear Sherry, dear John, literally. And there you've got an email. So once you've checked it and all of your links are good, and I'm gonna do this and send this and, and show you how to schedule, but I promise not to send it. So here's where you go. You go to continue. Now remember I mentioned briefly putting people on different lists, and this is our score. I don't have any names here, so I'm okay. But this is our score breakdown. So we have 23 partners in Benton Harbor. We have 562 clients. We have 38 volunteers. And I'm going to choose to send this message to my special guest, my admin only guest. Now at this point, you have to choose whether you want to send it now or you want to schedule it for later. And that all works out very well. Now it's not immediately, but it will do it fairly quickly. You can get results you know, on the commercial where they're waiting to see the results if you want them to come to you early. You can also resend to non-openers and primo time between emails is three to four days. If they haven't opened it by then, you can send it to them again. So you would choose the list of people that you want to send it to. You want to make sure that your subject line is correct and your from name is correct and they make you have this. So we're not even going to worry about that. And then we can schedule. I better schedule this out a ways. And I'll show you what that looks like once it's scheduled. So in order to make any edits to this now, you have to unschedule it. All right, this is a link to your newsletter that you can share. And you actually, John, this might even answer a little bit the question of the, uh, the folks with flip phones, you can, you can produce a PDF version of this newsletter that you can send to people. So that's what it would look like before it goes out. And then it's called a campaign. So there's just so many more buttons that I could push. And it's Sherry's practice email and it's scheduled. And if it works and I like it, I can copy it. I can unschedule it, important to see. I can preview it again, or I can look at the details. So with that, that is, I know, such a really brief overview of this, and I know there's gotta be about 800 questions. So let me go back here and field as many of those as I can. So recapping, well, I don't know why that did that. Get back, I didn't wait long enough. Answer three questions to write your content. Make sure that you have a call to action. So what are they there for? What's the email for? What's the purpose of the email? And what do you want people to do? And I don't know what happened to my second one there. Um, what to say and how to say it. Recap that we had for profit. Tell people what you're offering. How will it help me, the reader? What should I do? 
If it's a nonprofit, what are you trying to accomplish? Is it an event, a donation campaign? Why should I care? And then making sure to tell them how they can get involved. There it is. Every email should have a call to action. I think I've drilled that into enough today. And then always test links and send a preview. This is a list of the constant contact services that they now have. I am a constant contact certified partner. So if you're interested, I can get you a little bit of a deal, um, at least a free trial for a month. But they now have email websites, logos, social ads, and social media. And with that, John, I'll take any more questions you have. All right. So one question in particular related to constant contact. Uh, What's the difference between the email that you spent the time on and a newsletter? Ah, very good question. They are identical. They are the same platform. So the way I create a newsletter is no different from the way I create an email or a, an email blast. So you have email, you have social posts, you have events. But email is what they call any sort of an email blast, an email newsletter, a coupon send. They just refer to them all as emails. Excellent. And I know that uh, we at SCORE will send out periodic newsletters uh, that are, they look like emails, but they also include content and a variety of other functionalities. Correct. Um, now, uh, there were a number of questions regarding best practices, and Sherry, I think you did a really good job covering the best practices uh, throughout the presentation. Don't be a and spammer. I, what's that? <laughs> don't be a spammer. Yeah, and don't be a spammer. Um, but, uh, and I know that uh, we're using the Constant Contact platform, but uh, do you have any suggestions on other platforms that are out there that they could do similar things? Well, there's pretty much Constant Contact and MailChimp, unless you are a uh, website person, in which case you can get into all kinds of things with WordPress and they have plugins that can go crazy with. But the, the joy of Constant Contact, and I'll just give you the, the, the versus thing, because I only really know the Constant Contact versus MailChimp. I know that one has a higher limit of free emails. Constant Contact allows you 500 at the, at the first level and MailChimp allows you more. But I also know that Constant Contact has the events platform. They now have what's called a shoppable landing page. So as you're looking right here, I could create a landing page and you know those buttons we created, those could be sale buttons through PayPal or another commerce, e-commerce, directly through Constant Contact. I haven't seen MailChimp do that yet. And then the last reason why I would use Constant Contact, besides having all these tools at your disposal, is that I can get someone on the phone. I can get someone on chat. I have had customer service reps looking at my email that I'm trying to make columns or text wrap or something that wasn't working and frustrated me. And they go, okay, log out for a second and let me redo it and then log back in. So that's why I'm loyal to Constant Contact. And I just think these new things are, are coming out. They're, some of them may be still a little bumpy, but I can see sellable landing pages as a huge deal. Online events, um, it's not like Eventbrite. It's better. I think it's better than Eventbrite. That covers a few. <laughs> um, I don't think we have any more questions, at least ones that I saw, what I would like to uh, let everybody know is that this is being recorded and in the next day or so you will get a link to the recording. Uh, Sherry does a great job going through this, but I know for a first time person, uh, like, like myself occasionally, I always like to see things uh, again and again and again. Uh, you can see that recording. Uh, it also is accompanied by a closed caption on the side. Um, so, so that helps. But any questions that you may have, um, you can certainly uh, submit them to Sherry. 
and <clears throat> she can address them. She's an ex expert in this area. Uh, if you have any in interest in SCORE, uh, she'll connect you with SCORE of Southwest Michigan. We offer a variety of uh, functionality to small business owners. And uh, all you have to do is go on our website, sign up for a mentor, and uh, we'll get somebody in touch with you. We certainly appreciate everybody's time. Um, I noticed that uh, everybody pretty much uh, stayed with us uh, for the whole time, which Aww. is great. Great. And uh, we certainly appreciate that. Any feedback that, that you have for this, please let us know. And we're always trying to do a better job for everybody. Cherry, any last minute comments? Nope. No, thank you all for being here. Rachel, you're welcome. Kelly, you're welcome. Now I can see the questions, so that's more fun. So I get to see who's here. So thank you all for coming. Um, email me if you have questions. That's all I have. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sherry.